Okay, I have an example of using Spring Boot with Redis here and show you how to wire everything up. And if you need the source code for this, it is up on GitHub at my repository, Spring Framework Guru. And the, the path to the repository is spring-boot-redis-example. So you'll be able to get the complete source code for this project I'm about to step you through. I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ now. And I am using the latest release of Spring Boot at the time of recording this, which is uh, 1.5.2. That's the release version. And to get Spring, uh, Redis support in there, we just need to include the Spring Boot starter uh, for Redis. And you can see there on line 30, I've included that Maven dependency for Redis. And let's take a quick look to, I want to show you what's inside of that. So if we come over here to the Maven projects, we can see that the Spring Boot starter does bring in Spring data for Redis and then also the Redis client. So that uh, gets us all wired up. And like everything else in Spring Boot, when we bring in that dependency, that will trigger auto configuration for us. So it's automatically going to create up a connection to a Redis server running on localhost for us. So, and using the default connection properties. So toggling over to the product class, what we are going to do is create a Redis hash called products and give it an ID value of a string, which will get automatically generated by Spring Data, the Spring Data version for Redis. And let's take a look at the uh, repository for that. And we're just using the CRUD repository. And if you're not familiar with Spring Data, you know, what Spring Data is going to do is provide an implementation of the repository. So this makes uh, it very, very easy for us to work with Redis. We just provide uh, the interface for the CRUD repository and then wire it into our classes and that gets created at runtime for us by Spring Data and we can interact with the Redis database. So let's take a look at the product controller. We have a converter in the product to product form. This is for the data, data type conversion. This is used to uh, show it and bind the product data to the product form. So I also have the product form class here. So it looks a lot like the domain class of product, but this is really a, a backing object or a command object that some people would, would call it, which we will bind to the properties on the form and then convert that in our, our service layer. So go back over to the controller, take a, a quick look at this. You can see it, I don't have a, a lot of mapping here. It's pretty simple CRUD operations. I, I take the root and redirect to product list to show a list of products. And then I, I have the ability to show by ID, to edit by ID, create a new product, which will return back a blank product form. You can see on the edit there on line 56, that'll actually bring back the product from the Redis database via the service and then convert it over to the product form object and display it on the page. So let's see, you take a couple more things here. I do have a product service implementation that is getting injected into the product controller. I'm going to hit command and take a look at that. So pretty simple service. I'm writing to an interface which is considered a, a best practice that allows us to uh, wire in different types into our controller when we're doing testing and stuff like that. And let's go over here and we'll take a look at the implementation. I only have one implementation in this. We inject in that uh, product repository again that's being provided by Spring Data. And you can see not, not a lot of mystery going on here. We're using constructor-based dependency injection here on line 23 through 26. And we can see that we have a, a list, and we're going to find all from the repository. A uh, little Java 8-ism there, in case you're not familiar with Java 8 yet. So not, not too much here to look at. I'm going to go ahead and start up the application now. And we can see it starting up here in the bottom. Uh, it's going to start up pretty quick because there's really not a lot in the Spring application. You can see that the mapping came up and come over here into Chrome and had a test there. We'll go back to the root and I, I do have a product in there from my, my testing. So I can come in and create a new product. And I, I'm not doing any validations here on, on any of the uh, data fields. 
You can see that this was created. Come over here. I'll go back to the list page. We can see that I, I do have uh, two products in there. I can come in and edit this. And let's update the description. We'll add a bunch of E's there. And let's give it an image URL of all fives. And we can see that has gone back and persisted. So our changes are getting uh, persisted to the Redis database for us. Uh, let's try and verify the delete operation. You can see that the, the delete runs right away. So like uh, like we expect, since Redis is in memory, everything's going along pretty fast. So uh, not not a lot, lot there uh, for it's a pretty standard application. I want to point out I am using all the auto configuration stuff out of Spring Boot. So I didn't have to wire up any connection connections for Redis. Of course, if you should need to do that, if you need to override any properties, you'd be coming over here, application properties, and you can see IntelliJ has IntelliSense there. So we have a, a number of properties that we can override for Redis. These are showing a lot of the, the defaults. They're going to get set up by Spring Boot, and if we were running on a different server, different port, ID, password, we could uh, specify all that in our application up properties, or of course run overwrite those at, at runtime by specifying environment variables for these.